come. After eight years, this Prime Minister has doubled our national debt by adding $500 billion of deficit, inflationist deficit. What have we had for this money? Monthly payments for rent and mortgages that have doubled. Seniors are finding it hard to even eat because of this government's inflationist policies for, that have been the case for the past eight years. Criminality has gone up by 32% after eight years of this Prime Minister, but who has won? McKinsey consultants, they're the real winners. They've received $100 million. Yesterday, I asked five times how much money this uh, company has received, the Honourable Minister for Sports. Mr. Speaker, we know that things are unstable right now. Things are difficult for Canadians. The pandemic has affected Canadians. We were here for Canadians. Now we are going through another difficult period with high inflation. We will be here for those who need us the most. We will act responsibly so that our economy can continue to grow with good jobs for Canadians. We'll continue our work. They say they're going to be there for the people most in need, like the $1,000 an hour consultants over at McKinsey, a company that received over $100 million for work that public servants say was of little or no value. The total amount this government is spending on high-priced consultants, $15 billion. That is $1,000 for every single family in Canada. Wow. No wonder Canadians are eating increasingly at food banks after eight years of this government. No wonder seniors can't keep the heat on. Why won't they give us an answer? How much should Mackenzie get in total? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, and I remember in my time in opposition, looking at the member opposite who sat in a government that had uh, a poverty rate of 14.5 percent. And you know how often they talked about poverty or people in food banks? Never. And in fact, what has happened under this government is that rate has been reduced by 56 percent. We have lifted literally over 1.5 million people out of poverty. And I would point out that under the worst period of growth since 1946, which his government presided over, that this government in turn has seen more than 1.5 million jobs created since they left office. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, there they go. Telling Canadians, stop all your complaining. You've never had it so good. If you're one of the 1.5 million people eating at a food bank, stop your complaining. You've never had it so good. If you're one of those people going to a food bank seeking, seeking help with suicide, which is becoming increasingly common, they tell you, you've never had it so good. If you're one of the 35-year-olds the living in your parents' basement because this government's policies have doubled rent and doubled mortgage payments, they tell you, you've never had it so good. Why? Because they're spending all their time with McKinsey consultants. How much did those consultants get from taxpayers? Mr. Speaker, uh, it is in, it, when, you, when the world is going through something incredibly difficult, you have a choice of what you can do. You can look them in the eyes and tell them straight that they're in the most difficult time that humanity has gone through since the Second World War, or you can retreat, retweet what's going wrong in the world and make YouTube videos. It's time for serious leadership. And you know what's happened over the last eight years? Every time we put concrete solutions in place, the party opposite has obfuscated. They tried to block on support for dental, on support for rental, on support for child care, on support for OAS, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. And now their second tactic. First they tell Canadians they've never had it so good. Now they admit that it's miserable, but it's everyone else's fault. <laughs> the rest of the world did not raise the rent in Canada. Exactly. Rental rates are set here. We don't import our apartment buildings from Russia. We build them here in Canada. We don't set mortgage rates in Russia. We set them here in Canada. And after a half a trillion dollars of inflationary deficits, bidding up goods, and constant red tape preventing the construction of the homes we need. Our young people are stuck in their parents' basements. Why don't they stop blaming everyone else and finally take responsibility for the misery they've caused? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Oh, sure. 
Mr. Speaker, the member opposite had an opportunity to be in a government uh, and to do something on poverty. They didn't have any targets. They didn't talk about poverty. They didn't talk about homeless shelters. They didn't move those at all. And I've talked about what this government has done. But the IMF is now saying Canada will have the second highest GDP growth in the world. And the reality is that as we work hard to lift Canadians up and do critical things like child care and dental care, instead of just amplifying anxiety and fear, why won't they be part of the solution? And I would say, Mr. Speaker, they haven't been in this House. All they've done is block and obstruct real solutions. I just want to direct all the members to look at their whips and seek advice from them in their signals. They're going like this to calm down and not shout out. So I just want to remind everyone, their whip is working very hard and the deputy whip is too. Listen to them. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Now their third tactic. First they say everything's great. Then they say it's terrible but it's everyone else's fault. Then they say we should stop talking about how miserable people's lives are. He seems to suggest that people are anxious because I'm telling them that they can't afford food. No, their stomachs are telling them that they can't afford food. They seem to think that if I stop talking about the fact seniors in Northern Ontario can't heat their homes because of the carbon tax, that seniors won't notice that they're cold. They seem to think that if I don't talk about the 35-year-old living in his parents' basement, he won't realize that he's living there. Mr. Speaker, why don't they fix the problems instead of telling people to shut up about them? Mr. Speaker, we are plain and straight about the difficult times that we're going through as a planet. And I would suggest that when the member opposite had the opportunity to suggest, as an example, how people dealt with inflation, he recommended cryptocurrency. Uh, this is a party, Mr. Speaker, that at every opportunity is, is actually not offering any solutions and, in fact, ignoring the fact that when they had a chance to act on poverty, when they had a chance to act on creating jobs, they had such a bad record on GDP, there was 14 times in history where there was more growth in a single year than they had in their entire government. Wow.